Actually, we have about four questions here about bid'ah being practiced in India. And they're, they're asking you if you can do programs on, your, on a peace TV. For example, the first question we have about the salah, saying that the road after it. And uh, we have another question here from Sister Um Habiba. She says that the women are more responsible for the bid'ah in India. How do you respond to all these questions? In fact, there are many programs on the peace TV, alhamdulillah, which focus on removing the bid'ah. And you know there are thousands and hundreds of thousands of bid'ah throughout the world. And every culture has their own set of right. bid'ah. And India not being unlike, they have many bid'ah. Mm -hmm. Anything which is against the Quran and the Sahih Hadith, which people think it's part of the deen, it's a duty to, to tell them that this is not our deen. And this comes because of the culture. What we realize that Indians, most of us initially, we were Hindus. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have Arab blood in us. Maybe a few. <laughs> but the majority of us, we are coming from a background which were Hindus. Maybe of grandfather, great great grandfather. So many of the practices of our great great grandfather's religion do creep into us. So mm -hmm. though we do become Muslims, there are some of the practices which creep into us, and we substitute that. That's how we find these various pada. So it's yeah. our duty to point out that this is not part of Islam. It is the innovation that came later on. That is the reason we say that anyone says anything about Deen, he should back it up with a reference from the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. Mm -hmm. And I say. If any scholar says anything, let him be the greatest scholar in the world. Mm. We follow Allah, His commandment in the Quran, and the Prophet Muhammad His commandments, and His way of life, and the next three generations. Any scholar after that says anything. If he does not refer to these sources, whatever he says doesn't carry weight. If it's mm. a part of deen. If it's something else is different. We're talking about mamla, talking about science, technology is different. But if it's talking about the deen, uh, about the ibadah, Ibadat. It should be backed up from proof from the Quran worship. and the Sahih Hadith. Mm -hmm. yes. Worship. Yeah. Okay. So unfortunately, the easiest way to remove it, any scholar says anything, let him be the most famous. Therefore, I say what Zakir Naik says in Islam is zero. But whenever I give, I've, I always, when I give answer, I back it up with the reference of the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. Even if you try it and it, and it does work still, <laughs> it's not uh, sunnah. Not because you tried it, you tried something and it does work, like you recited a certain chapter several times and you say, this is cool. This is good uh, as far as if somebody is sick, you can recite this chapter Sorry, several right. times. You cannot say, I tried it myself and it does work. <laughs> you cannot say that. That's right. So the main thing is that whenever anything is deen, it should be back to the Quran. So when you find all these innovations coming in India, mm. I request the people, the Muslims, to ask reference from the shaykh. Yeah. And if the shaykh give references, backed up with proof, if it's there in the Sahih Hadith, that means that it is the part of deen. If it's not, then just by saying that my sheikh said so and so, or this great scholar said so and so, that's not sufficient for it to be part of the deen. Okay, Jazakallah Khair. We have